Hello, NGG. Welcome to Penn. You've made it, and so have I. My name is Xu Yuqian. I'm an assistant professor launching my lab in fall 2025. I'm just as new as you are, which also means I bring the same energy, ambition, and sense of possibility that you are feeling right now. My research focuses on the development and disorders of the human cerebral cortex. I study it using two complementary approaches. Direct analysis of human brain tissues through spatial transcriptomics, and modeling with human stem cell-derived brain organoids. My lab is based at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in the new Bridge Center, short for Brain Research Initiative for Development, Genetics, and Engineering. I'll be spending this fall setting up the lab and building the team, and I'll be ready to take rotation students starting January 2026. Why study the human cerebral cortex? Because it is what makes us human. It is a seat of higher cognition, language, and most importantly, imagination. It is a crown jewel of the brain. Compared to the more ancient, survival-focused region like the brainstem or the hypothalamus, the cortex is evolutionarily young and incredibly advanced in humans. But that same complexity makes it vulnerable. Disorders like autism and brain malformation often stem from disruptions in cortical development. Yet our understanding of how the human cortex develops is still limited, largely because we rely so heavily on mouse models, not because they are the best model, but because they are convenient and cost-effective. But mice simply do not capture many of the human-specific features of brain development. That is why I've shaped my research career around human-based systems, studying the human brain on its own terms. Organoids has become a buzzword in recent years, but I started working with brain organoids before most people had ever heard of it, back in 2014. These are tiny self-organizing balls of cells. About three to four millimeters in diameter, each containing roughly five million cells, and they can be made from anyone's cells, including yours and mine. Inside, they replicate many of the key features of the developing human cerebral cortex. Over the past eleven years, I've accumulated a gallery of organoid-related images, and I'll be playing this montage on screen while I talk. During my PhD. We develop one of the first scalable and reproducible protocols to generate cerebral cortex-specific organoids, which led to one of the most highly cited papers in the field. Using these models, we were among the first to demonstrate a causal link between Zika virus infection and microcephaly. Since then, I've stayed at the forefront of organoid research, not just in using them, but in understanding their limits. I spent years troubleshooting and optimizing the system. Which means I have hands-on understanding of not only what organoids are good for, but also what they can't do. And honestly, that's the hard part. If you only read published papers, you mostly see the success stories. I know what goes wrong and how to make them work. But at the end of the day, organoids are still models. Like all models, they are approximations. As the saying goes, all models are wrong, but some are useful. The key is knowing how to benchmark them. To do this, we need reference maps based on actual human brain tissues. The gold standard today is single cell profiling of gene expression, but traditional single cell RNA seq requires dissociation of the tissue into individual cells, which destroys the spatial architecture of the brain in the process. That's why I focus on spatial transcriptomics technologies that preserve both gene expression and spatial context at single cell resolution. Using single cell resolution spatial transcriptomics method called Murfish, we recently built a atlas of the developing human cerebral cortex based on over 18 million single cells. This work challenges long-standing assumptions in the field. It shows that boundaries between cortical layers and between cortical areas emerges much earlier in development than previously thought, long before they are visible to the eye. In short, spatial transcriptomics can readily uncover striking organization that is hidden in plain sight. Looking ahead, 
my lab will integrate these two approaches, organoid and human brain tissues, into a unified strategy. At the heart of our work is a commitment using human-based platforms. Postmortem tissue give us the molecular and spatial ground truth. It captures what's really happening in the human development and diseases. But it is static. We cannot manipulate it, and we only get a snapshot one at a time. Organoids, by contrast, are dynamic and experimentally tractable. They allow us to observe development as it unfolds, manipulate genetic or environmental factors, and test potential interventions. Of course, they are imperfect models, but that's exactly why we need to benchmark them against the real tissue. I see these systems as reciprocal tools. Organoid must be validated by comparison in human brain tissues to ensure they are biologically meaningful, and postmortem tissue, rich as it is, can only tell us so much without experimental models to test the mechanisms. Each informs the other. Together, they create a complementary and powerful framework for studying human cortical development and its disorders. So, what will we actually do in the lab? Here are some examples of the projects I'm excited to pursue, some readily underway, others launching soon. First, expanding the developmental atlas of the human cerebral cortex. While our current atlas is already orders of magnitude larger than what everyone else has done in the field previously, profiling over 18 million single cells, it's still far from complete. We focused so far on the mid-gestation stage, but there is so much more to explore. Earlier developmental windows, or later stages like the neonatal period, and additional cortical areas that haven't been yet mapped. Filling these gaps will provide a richer, more continuous view of uh, cortical development. Second, engineering next generation organoids that mimic specific cortical areas. For years, the field has been focused on producing generic cortical organoids, but the cortex is not one uniform structure. Our spatial data offers a unique opportunity to benchmark and improve organoids so that they resemble distinct cortical areas with much higher fidelity. This is important because neurodevelopmental disorders often affect particular regions of the cortex. If we can recreate those areas in a dish, we will be in a much better position to study these disease mechanisms more precisely. Third, using organoids as platforms for disease modeling. There is a long list of genes of association with neurodevelopmental disorders, but for many of them, we still don't know how they work. With CRISPR and organoids, we can now build efficient and scalable models to interrogate these genes and dissect their functions. The system can even be used to test therapeutic interventions, helping to bridge the gap between discovery and application. Lastly, analyze human disease tissue with spatial transcriptomics. At CHOP and other institutions, neuropathology departments have stored decades worth of FFPE brain samples, preserved in paraffin blocks, just waiting to be revisited with new tools. With spatial transcriptomics, we can finally extract meaningful molecular insights from these time capsules by analyzing them alongside match controls to uncover the underlying pathology and pathogenesis at precision not achievable by traditional methods. By pairing these analyses with organoid models, we can formulate and test mechanistic hypotheses that link pathology to development. As a brand new faculty, I am building my lab from the ground up. This first year will be a small team, two technicians and one or two postdocs. I'll be at the bench myself, running experiments, training lab members hands-on, and learning alongside everyone as I grow into the role of a mentor and a PI. My office door will always be open. Even though my lab is small, it won't feel isolated. We are part of the Bridge Center at CHOP, a new tight-knit community of faculty and trainee that focus on brain development, genetics, and engineering. We'll have joint lab meetings, spontaneous hallway chats, and lots of cross-lab collaborations. So with that, if you're curious about brain development, excited about organoids, or looking for a lab where you will define from the very start, I hope you will consider doing a rotation in the Qian lab. 
please feel free to reach out by emailing to chat or ask questions. I'll be at the faculty poster session on August 22nd. Come and say hi.